So, now, I did tell you there was a little bit of magic there. We just simply had that little, you know, N-A-M-E equals and input and blah, blah, blah. That's, that's, that's what we had. We should probably define a little bit better what that name was. Well, what that name was is what we as, de as developers, as coders, which is now all of us, yep. all of us, we like to call those variables. And, and Susan actually put together um, pretty much all of these slides, um, did a fantastic job with them. And I love the analogy that Susan has here, is that it's a box. What's a box? It's a container. It's something that I can put something else into. I can store something into it so that way I can come back and get back to it later. So whatever it is that you're looking to, to store to use later, that's exactly what a variable is going to allow you to, uh, to do. Yep. So, you know, I, I, I always like to go with a, a slightly different analogy. Um, so I'm going to go with my analogy here, but I do love this one. Um, I always like to go with a math analogy. Okay. I forgot to warn everybody there was oh, no. going to be math today. <laughs> I know. You're asking a lot. I know. Right. Some of these people um, are in time zones. It's getting late. I, I, I know, but I'm on my second cup of coffee, okay. so I'm all, right. all set. Go with the math. Go with the math. So um, if we come back to my slide here so I can kind of draw my screen, um, remember back to algebra class where you had something like uh, 206 minus x equals 42? Yeah, my, uh, yeah, absolutely. Basic okay. algebra, yeah, yeah. 206 minus, and you had to solve and figure out what x was. Exactly. What was x? Well, x, as it turned out, was really nothing more than a placeholder. That's all that it was. It's just a placeholder. So you would go in, you would do your math, and don't worry, I'm not going to do the whole math, and you would determine that x in this case is going to be 164. 164. I'm double-checking my math. Okay. Okay, yep. Um, so okay, yeah. you picked a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> but I see that the answer was 42, and that's important. Yeah, exactly, yes. Yeah. Yep, the answer is always 42. Um, but in any event, so right here, what you're going to notice is that x is a placeholder. So what's a variable? It's a placeholder. It's a box. Whatever analogy it is that you like there, whatever it is that's going to help make it stick for you, I want you to go with that. So it's something where you can store it and come back to it later. Now, needless to say, yep. by the way, why is it that people say needless to say and say it anyway? I don't know, but I have a feeling you're about to. I, I am. <laughs> needless to say, and I'm going to say it anyway, you can have multiple variables. And in fact, you're very rarely going to be able to write any level of a, of a, of a program, of a script, or anything that goes beyond kind of a basic hello world without having some level of variable usage. And so what you're going to notice is that you can go in and create multiple variables as needed and give them, essentially, whatever name it is that you might want. Now, how can you then go in and access it? Well, just use the name. Yep. Now, let's kind of break this down a little bit. So, we already saw name equals input. Now, what is input going to do? Input is going to prompt the user for a value, and whatever it is that it gets back, it's going to put into that little placeholder. So if I had on my screen here that little input and I typed in, uh, for example, uh, Christopher, T-O-P-H-E, it, it, it looks like one of your kids grabbed a crayon there. Um, <laughs> so in any event, um, if somebody wrote out or typed in um, uh, Christopher, what's going to happen is this is now going to wind up inside of that name variable. So everywhere that I go in and I use name, that's now going to be, in this case, Christopher. Christopher. Okay, makes sense. So this line of code right here would be equivalent, and I'm going to do it with, uh, with Zoom it because it'll be a little bit easier for me to do. This would be equivalent to me typing out print Christopher. Yep. Those two lines of code are equivalent. Why? Well, because again, name is simply that placeholder for, in our case, Christopher, because that was what the user typed in. Cool. And now I need to kind of clean up my screen there. 
All right. Getting a little cracked, getting a little cluttered. It is. And there's a little screenshot. They, yeah, when, when you did this, you used a shorter name. That way with Bob. Bob. Yeah. I'm yep. lazy. I told you, I'm a lazy coder. Yep. Even my test names are lazy. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, like we mentioned before, a variable is a box. It's a placeholder. And so if I take, for example, that little box and I dump that box out, what I've got now is an empty box. So could I take that empty box and could I put something else inside of there? And the answer, of course, is absolutely. So if I take that box, I empty it out, and I put something else inside of it, now what's going to be inside of there is going to be whatever that new value is. So if we come back to the slide here, what I want you to notice, I'm going to do it with zoom it. That's a little bit easier for me. Um, there we go. We'll go with blue. So. What you're going to notice here is that we said name equals input, and then they, they typed in the name. By the way, one real quick side note here. You are going to notice that we don't need a declaration um, in front of that variable. Yeah, and that, that, that's one of those ones, and you know, you can open up a whole can of worms of, oh, but you know, you have to be able to declare your variables. Let's not get into the great debate, or is it better to use a programming language that requires you to declare variables or not declare variables? Remember, we said Python is a very forgiving language mm -hmm. uh, that is trying to make it easy for you to get going with code. So, no, you do not have to declare your variables before you use them. If you exactly. use a variable name in a line of code, it goes, I've never heard of name. I'll just make it now. Yep, exactly. Yeah. 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 There's pros so. and cons, but yeah. And, yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> and, and, that's, and, and this is a debate that we could get into um, for the next four hours, but <laughs> we're not going to do it. So there it is. So it will just let you declare your variables right there on the fly. And, and it will try to figure out what it is that you're doing. Um, one of the things that we'll see over the next um, couple of modules is that this does sometimes wind up causing a little bit of problem when we're trying to deal with numbers and things like that. But for right now, with strings especially, it, it will just kind of roll with the punch. It is there. what it is. Exactly. Yep. There Every we go. Every programming languages has things you will like about it and things you will not like about it. Yep. So, but anyway, it's good to just be aware that no, Python does not actually require you to declare the variable before yep. you use it in your code. Yep. Okay. Cool. So, what you're going to notice here um, is sort of the, uh, the same demo that we had before. So, what is your name? And then print and then whatever the name is. And then what you're going to notice here is on the next line, let me just change my uh, color here. Um, we said name equals Mary. Now, one of the things that I always like to do whenever I'm kind of doing demos is I always like to show you based on what we've already seen. So what did we already see? How do I take something and put it into a variable? That little equal sign right there. So that little equal sign, let me just clear out my screen here, kind of make it a little easier to read. That little equal sign, that's what told Python to take whatever it was that came back from here and put it there. It was that equal sign. Yep. So if I use that equal sign again, and I say just hard-coded string Mary, and I use that equal sign, and I put that right there into name, what do we think is now going to happen? I'm thinking that maybe the contents of name have changed. And I'm thinking you're right. Awesome. So again, keep them with that box analogy. We took the box, dumped it upside down, and then we put Mary into it. So down at the very bottom, you're going to notice that we print out the name. So if we take a look at the results here, a kind of little sample down here at the very bottom, what you're going to notice, and I'm thinking yellow is going to show up really well here, um, you're going to notice that we typed in Bob. That was the initial name. Yep. And so, kind of going back to before, what we did was we took that input, we printed that out, so that's why we got Bob. Yep. Then on the next line, we updated that to Mary, and then we printed that out. So when we go to print that out the second time, now what you're going to notice is that there is Mary the second time. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So with that, let's go in and, and, and demo this here. So let me kick out of my slides card, and I want to be there. There we go. Okay, so we're going to keep on keeping on here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw in a real quick comment here. Um, collect a name from the user. Yep. And let's just go ahead and display the name. Excellent habits, commenting your code. Absolutely. You. Yep. Um, and then now, let's go ahead and update the value. And let's go ahead and say name equals, and let's say Christopher 
Harrison, for yeah, example. Picking a name at random. At, at random. Yes. Exactly. And now let's go in and say, well, say print name. Beautiful. So now, one more time, I'm going to click start. There we go. So what is your name? I'm going to put in Susan there. All right. And then I'm going to hit enter. And now what you're going to notice is that it prints out Susan the first time. So again, uh, let's go with a better color. There we go. Now, you know, one of those things, um, the tool that we're using to draw on our screens um, when we're not in PowerPoint is a little tool called Zoomit. Um, you can fire up Bing, do a search for, uh, for Zoomit, um, all one word, and yep. it'll be like the first link there, download it. Um, it's available from Microsoft. It was a tool that somebody named Mark Racinovich put together. It's a fantastic presentation tool. If you're doing presentations, can't suggest it highly enough. But every now and then it just wants to go, well, you probably meant a straight line. I was slightly <laughs> off, so it said, well, you probably want a straight line, and that's why I'm slightly off um, down there. But in any event, so you're going to notice print name. There we go. And then what you're going to notice right there is, once again, print name and then Christopher. So we took what was in name, got rid of it, and then put something else inside of there. Cool. All right.